Hey guys, I got this Python hosting question in my inbox. And in this video, I want to share some of my thoughts. So here's the question. Why are there so few Python shared free hosting offers compared to PHP? Um, this is a really interesting question because I never really thought of it that way. You know, by, by comparison, I never really felt there was um, less hosting or shared hosting offers for Python compared to PHP. It never really occurred to me. Um, I think if you specifically look for shared hosting um, or, you know, the kind of hosting where just FTP up a bunch of files and then you have your web application running that way, then I think this is an accurate observation though, right? Like this kind of hosting setup, it exists much more for PHP and not so much for Python. I think there's actually a ton of free Python ho hosting out there. It just follows a different methodology than what most PHP hosts offer. So, so let me explain what I'm, what I'm saying here, right? Typically when you host a Python application, um, what I personally do and what I see most other people do is that you would just host it on, for example, a platform as a service um, kind of offering like Heroku or uh, the Microsoft Azure Cloud or the Google Cloud Engine or something like that, where you can just, you know, bundle up your application, host it in the cloud somewhere, and it'll run if it's a Python web application. The, the hosting model where you get FTP credentials and you upload a file and um, it just runs through CGI on a server and you have some kind of web app website running there, like it's often done with PHP, that isn't really that popular in the Python world. And I could totally go on a rant here and say some very bad things about PHP and maybe how it has like a less professional um, developer audience, but I'm not gonna do that. I mean, fundamentally, we all just wanna get stuff done and we use whatever means whatever means and whatever tools we have at hand, right? Whether that's PHP or Python. So I don't want to be all smug about it. But on the other hand, I think there's a certain truth to that. So, you know, it takes a little bit more skill and more experience to use these platform as a service providers, but um, they actually offer you a ton of advantages, right? By comparison, if you need to upload your, your Python file or PHP file just through an FTP server, then that doesn't really give you scalable deployments and it doesn't really help you um, you know ma maintain that code base and, and deploy it in any kind of reproducible fashion with something like Heroku you can just deploy straight from your git repository you can roll back deploys you can do these deploys um, atomically and you can do them seamlessly so that the new version of your app comes up as the old version goes down and there's kind of a seamless deploy process. And, and you can do, it's very hard to do that with the kind of FTP upload, run a CGI script kind of hosting. So, well, to to answer this question or maybe to give some, uh, some advice on how to do your Python web application hosting, well, I think you have to just pick up these skills, you know, figure out how to package up your application so you can deploy to Heroku and then do that. It's actually a great thing for you and you don't want to do the classical, you know, upload an FTP file to some server and run that on shared hosting. I, in my mind, that is a bad development or a bad deployment practice. And if you can get away from that, then that's actually a great thing. And if you view the if you view the world from that perspective or the hosting world from that perspective, you'll see that there's a ton of options for Python hosting out there. And uh, the reason for that is that usually these hosting options, they're not advertised as Python hosting specifically. It's just a cloud provider, a platform as a service where you can take your programs and run them on there, whatever the programming language. And Python is just a very popular target in that respect. All right, if this video was helpful, then click the like and subscribe button and maybe post your own question in the comment below and I'll try and tackle it in a future video.